So here we are in Biker, in this beautiful spring sunshine, and we've come to meet Penny, who has been a long time co-collaborator with us over the last two years. But with a real shift in, in your engagement with us now, isn't it, Penny? When I think about the last three projects, Imagine Your Sea, Who Holds the Torch, and Beauty Festival. What a journey, what a journey. What's the journey been like for you, Penny? Exciting, um, fun, you know, I've had such a laugh. It's been so good to like, sort of use different skills that I've got that, you know, I keep a little bit hit that people don't know about. So not only am I a cook, but you know, I can do other things. But food's always the thing that's closest to my heart. All my background is food. That's all I do. I cook food. I do books. I do things like that. Which is how I came to be involved in Skimstone in the first place. Was, you know, you needed somebody to do a little bit of food for the end parties. So that's what I did. But it's also broadened my horizon. And then when I thought, like, let's slip every now and again, we do more than just cook foods. Uh, it's a case of, oh, well, you know, shall we, shall we have a try and see what any can do? But it, it brings me on. It, like, sort of, in times where it's been hard, especially during lockdown, is, you know, what can you do? You know, I can't do an awful lot. I can't go out and meet people. I can't go and cook meals and have people enjoy it like normal so it's a case of what do you do so you do things online you do things on zoom and we still put together such an eclectic mix of radio programs and things where people can watch it and you know then you, you put it all together in the festival and it just it just brings extra things and what about your role in that you know we we have this phrase as we, we know like co-creating like we can't make anything without anybody coming and working with us it's about that sense of working together so how did that feel like working well you worked with me i was looking yes. to work with you and then i had to let you go <laughs> and, and work with peter you know from your musicianship so tell us what co-creating sort of meant for you it it brings forward the skills that i've got that aren't quite as polished as other skills and it also it, it it brings you forward because it brings me as a person to have more more say in things but also to like sort of hone this extra skills that I've got I could never have presented anything I could never have written anything without like sort of your help and especially without Peter's you know I could yes I can play but I've, I could I've got to have the notes I've got to have you know somebody there te taking us through them I can't do it like Peter can where Peter comes up with the notes and stuff and says, right, like, this is what you can play, so this is how I do it. So you've got the support behind you, and once you've got that, and once you know your strengths and weaknesses, it's just a case of having somebody bring them out for you and show you you can do all these extra things. So, thinking about what was made, you know, um, the piece for Who Holds the Torch, um, particularly, do you feel you sort of own some of that song or did it feel more like Peter's song or a bit of both or how does that how did it feel about that particular tell, tell us about the song the song was it's all about the community and it's how I was brought up I was brought up to respect the community do what you can for your community and that's what the song was so it had quirky little bits in about my childhood like a cracket you know a cracket is a little three legged stool that you sit on with a hole in the middle um, and it's what miners used to use down the pit and it's made out of wood so you can't, you've got no chance of sparking any metal or anything so little things like that that was put in funny things that we would put in like, to make it rhyme and stuff like that But you were part of that process? But yeah, because we would sit and go through it all you know, it was me and Peter and we just sat there and worked at it When it went out on radio, how did it feel? Well, you know, great. It was saying, oh, I've done that. And I'm saying to people, oh, I've, I've done this song, you know, with skin stoning. Me and Pete sat and did this song and we did this. And it was a case of, you know, it, it feels just so amazing and it just boosts you up. So 
Finally, because obviously it works both ways, with the respect to the fact you've given your time and your energy when sometimes life can be hard or it can be exhausting and all the rest of it. Final question then is, not only did you create songs, but at the Unity Festival you co-presented a workshop. Can you just summarise what, what did that feel like for you? I mean, were you involved in the planning at all of it? How did you decide what to put in? What was the experience like? I mean, for me it was something new. Um, yes, I've done workshops before, and yes, I've presented on workshops, but doing it online was new to me, and I'm still not a fan of online stuff. Um, I'm of the age where, you know, I can't really get to grips with it. I'm not technically minded. Pots and pans, yes, I'm fine with, but, you know, computers and things like that's not my best thing. But it was one of them things where, you know, we did it, we still had a laugh, you know, what, did you get, what did you get people to do? We got people to cook. You know, I give you know Peter a cooking lesson just about about how not to put too much salt in your foods. <laughs> I hope he takes you up on that, Penny. And there was people from all over the world, at, you know, at your workshop with you both. What did that feel like? It just again amazing. It was you don't realise how far that technology can reach these days which is the good thing about it but like I say it's also the hard thing when you know you're not that technically minded but you know to see people from different parts of the world into it isn't is a good thing so what advice would you give to people about working with skimstone arts and, and you can be really honest you know we, we can be hard work you know a bit much uh, they're exhausting uh, I hope they do show but what what would you say about the overall the experience of working with Skim Stone Arts and, and about us working with you as well? You're all mad. <laughs> but it's a, an idea. It's, yeah, it's, it's a funny kind of mad. But it's you nurture. You know, you see the potential in people. And because you can see the potential in people, you then nurture and you bring that potential out of people that people don't even think they've got. So it's, it's like looking at somebody and thinking, that person could do this you just need the little prod in the right direction yes i can play you know but i play in a brass band with 26 to 30 other people i don't play things on my own i don't do solos and things like that i don't do cookery programs you know where people are watching us cook and stuff like that you know i don't write songs yes i've wrote one form before on my own but the rest of the stuff that we've done through Skinstone has always been somebody's there just in case you need it. Wow, that's really powerful stuff. And I know Peter, we're going to hear from Peter now about working with Penny. So Peter, tell us what it was like to work with Penny. Um, well, Penny can contradict me if she wants, but I thought we had a very easy working relationship. There was a lot of flow between us, um, a lot of good banter. But also, we focused on, on topics um, that we felt were important. So our, our first song, Community, was very much around um, what Penny was talking around earlier, those community values, giving back to your community, helping to nurture people, standing alongside each other. So I think it had a very, very strong message when we did the radio show. Um, it, was, it was quite an anthem for the radio show. I wanted to talk about the other, the other song when we wrote Human Circle together. Um, when we were talking about it, it was for who holds the torch. So we were talking about, you know, casting light for people. And the subject came up, you know, cooking for people, which Penny has done tons and tons of in the community. Um, so it was a very natural topic to discuss. And I think we had a lot of fun, didn't we? We did. Go, going through, you know, um, go through our past meals that we, we cooked, um, memories of people. But also that importance of food, that it's the glue that binds people together. And there's a, there's a line in the song that Penny said that I'd never forget, a non-judgmental interaction. Yeah. And it was, it's something that stayed with, I mean there's a few great lines in that song, um, but that was direct uh, quote from Penny. And as soon as I heard her say that, I thought, that's, that's going in that song. Tell us about co-presenting the Unity Festival. Well, that was great. I mean, we, we had a chance to get together again, do some planning, talk about the recipe. Um, and actually, the, the, one of the most fun things was the, you know, Penny's sense of humour came out. So 
I'd made some videos of you know putting salt in the pan and of course the, the salt tub slipped and Tim Penny was saying yeah I don't, I don't think you need that much salt in there Peter <laughs> so there was some there was some you know as well as like getting the message over about cooking the pasta about um, things you could add to it um, uh, we also like really shared a great atmosphere we, we do have fun you know, it's, it's, this is another thing, you know, I'm quite good at ad-libbing, I'm quite good at like sort of off the cuff. Thank you both so much, that's absolutely brilliant.